Okay, so now let's uh, get onto some examples of <clears throat> different types of functions. And we're just gonna look at the graphs and just kind of practice, you know, writing all of the characteristics. So I have four kind of graphs uh, right up here and here. I have one, two, three. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. How did that one happen? Um, so what we're gonna do for each of these graphs is we're gonna look into labeling the type of discontinuities, uh, label any extrema, uh, increasing, decreasing, constant intervals if there are, uh, the boundness, domain and range, uh, if the function is even or odd or neither, as well as then lastly the end behavior. So let's, uh, let's go and kind of take a look at this first one here. Um, first thing is type of discontinuities. You can see that this graph, I can graph it continuously. So it is continuous, so I'll just write in continuous. Uh, part B is the extrema. So you can see here that I have some extrema here. I have a max and I have a min. However, those are not the absolute max, nor are they the uh, relative min. So I'm just going to label them as far as the uh, where they occur. So I'm just going to say a relative uh, max um, at x equals negative 2 and a relative min at x equals positive 2. Okay, and again, you can do local max or mans, or you could say at the point, um, you know, if you want to as well. For C, we're going to talk about increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. So again, we're looking at the inc, we're looking at the x values. We don't really even really even care about these y values. You can actually even erase, like cover those up if you want to, if that's going to help you out. Uh, we can see that the graph is increasing on a couple different intervals. The graph is increasing from negative infinity all the way to x equals negative two. So I'll say negative infinity to negative two. And then you could also see that it's increasing, so then it goes and it's going down, and then it goes back increasing again from 2 to infinity. So then I'll go from 2 to infinity. Now again, you can connect those with the union symbol, but it's not required, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, as the graph is not constant, sorry, the graph is not constant anywhere. There's no points where it's remaining the same for an interval. You could say like at those points it's constant, but that's not an interval uh, that the graph is constant. So the graph is decreasing here from negative two to when x equals two. Again, notice how I'm not referring to these x values at all, right? I'm talking about the x values for increasing, decreasing intervals. Uh, for part D is going to be the boundness. You can say that since this graph um, does not have any max, absolute max or absolute min, we'll say that this graph is unbounded. That's an E. Uh, for E, oops, I forgot to add G. For E, we're going to have domain and range. Well, you can see that this domain here is going to be all real numbers, right? The graph never really kind of stops um, going from left to right. So the domain is going to be from, and I'm going to use interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. And the range, basically how low does the graph go to how high does it go, is again, it's unbounded. So therefore, it's going to go from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, F is the graph even, odd, or neither. You can see that this graph has symmetry. Right? You can see that this graph has symmetry about the y-axis as well as about the x-axis. So when you flip about the y and the x-axis, you can see that you're going to get the exact same graph back. So therefore, this graph is odd. And g, do, 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 g, do, do, g is going to be the end behavior. Okay, so let's just say you know, as um, x goes towards infinity, and as x goes towards negative infinity. Uh, so as x is going towards infinity, so as that's basically saying as we're going to the right, you can see that the graph is going up, right? So it's going to be approaching positive infinity. And as x is going towards the left, you can see that the graph is going down. So therefore, our function or our output value is going to be approaching negative infinity. Okay, let's go and look at this next one. Um, and actually, let's see, there we go. Remember them. Uh, all right, so for the next one is type of discontinuities. Well, you can see the graph is continuous, but you can see there's kind of like an undefined value here at, at negative 2. So we can say that is going to be a whole at x equals negative 2. Okay, uh, part B is going to be the extrema. Um, 
Now, it's important here when you're looking at this point, you might say, well, all right, well, this is the lowest point, right? But that point is undefined, so it can't be an extrema. Um, then the graph is always continuously going up, so there's going to be no extrema going that way either. So this is an example of no extrema. Because again, this value is undefined. At negative 2, that point, negative 2, 2, is undefined. So it's not going to be an extrema. Um, for part C, it is going to be increasing, decreasing, or neither. Well, you can see that this graph is only increasing, right? So it's increasing on the interval. And again, this is an open interval. So it's OK that that's undefined. And it wouldn't matter if it's undefined or, or, or defined. We're still going to use the open interval from negative 2 to infinity. Uh, part D is going to be asking for the boundness. And we could say that this graph is bounded below because even though it doesn't have a defined absolute minimum, we know that the graph does not go below you know, y equals negative 2. So we're going to say this is bounded below. Let's see if I can write on that a little better. Uh, part E is going to be the domain range. Uh, so the domain here is going to see, like, looks like we start from negative to, again, how far left and right? Well, the farthest left this graph goes is negative 2. And the farthest right it goes is really infinity. Now, again, remember, x equals negative 2 is undefined. So therefore, I need to use my open interval. So therefore, it's going to be from negative 2 to infinity. Whereas the range in this case is, again, how low does the graph go to how high does it go? So the range, the lowest this graph goes is positive 2. And the highest this graph goes is going to be infinity. But again, 2 is undefined, so I'm going to use my open intervals. All right, uh, f, that is going to be your even, odd, or neither. So when we look at this graph, will we try to look for any kind of symmetry, anything that I can like, you know, split the graph in half, flip it over that? Nope. Flip over the x and the y, it's going to be somewhere down here. So again, this has no symmetry, so this is neither. Or, I'm sorry, it doesn't have y or origin symmetry. And then last but not least is the m behavior. Um, so let's look at as x approaches infinity. So as x approaches infinity, so as it's going to the right, you can see that the graph is increasing. It's slightly increasing, but it is increasing. So we'll say f of x approaches infinity. And as um, x approaches negative infinity, so as we're going to the left, you can see that the graph stops, right? It doesn't actually approach negative infinity. So we're just going to say there's no end behavior, right? Because even though as it's going towards the left, it's approaching you know, the y value of 2, it's not, er, um, it's not as x is approaching negative infinity. It's only as x is going towards negative 2. So it's not actually a definition of end behavior. All right, let's look at the next one. Here we have two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. And then we have a lovely horizontal asymptote. Mm, nice graph. All right, so the first one is looking for discontinuities. And you can say, yeah, we have a couple diff diff discontinuities, right? We have a vertical asymptote. Actually, I'm just going to say asymptote because that's your discontinuity. We have an asymptote at at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Now, you could say there's a horizontal asymptote, but that's not really going to be our discontinuity um, because when we're, again, looking at the characteristics of the graph, we're looking at the x values, right? That's what we're concerned about is relating the characteristics of this graph using the x values, not so much the y values or you know what's happening for this y value. So for instance, the horizontal asymptote we're not going to use as our discontinuity. Uh, for part B is going to be the extrema. And kind of interesting here, like we see that there is a relative min here. There is no absolute max or absolute min. Um, and again, even though this looks like, like relative here, the graph is going to get closer and closer to zero. Um, however, again, the definition of an extrema is their coordinate points, right? So we don't have a coordinate. These, these actually aren't coordinate points here. And from, for it to be a relative extrema, the points to the left and to the right have to be either higher or lower. And that's not going to be the case as we continue here. So the only extrema that we have here is at this point 0, 1. But again, I'm just going to define this. Uh, I'll just say this is a relative uh, max. OK, so this is going to be a relative, not max, that's a relative min. 
So we're going to have a relative min at x equals 0. Okay? Or again, you could say it's at the coordinate point, you know, 0, comma, 1. Uh, for part C, we're going to look at when is the graph increasing, decreasing. So there's a couple things that are going on here, right? And you got to look at each one um, different. There's no constant values. But we can see the graph is decreasing from here to here. And again, read this from left to right. So as I'm traveling from left to right, you can see that I'm decreasing. Whenever I'm on this little graph here, I am decreasing. Then I jump the asymptote, and I'm decreasing again, right? But then I start to change the increasing. So my decreasing values are going to be from negative infinity towards, uh, looks like it's going, going to be decreasing all the way to that asymptote of negative 2. And then jump over that asymptote from negative 2 all the way to the x value of 0. And then I can say the graph is increasing on the x value of 0 towards the positive value, x value of 2. And then it jump over the asymptote, and it's going to be increasing from 2 to infinity. And again, guys, I'm using the parentheses, so these values are not defined on my interval as increasing decrease, right? Because obviously, you're not going to be defined at vertical asymptotes. Uh, part D is going to be the boundness. Um, so basically, we want to see, you know, does this graph have any boundness? Now, there is no absolute max and absolute min, so that's actually kind of a, a poor representation of my definition previously. Um, but you can see here, there is no absolute max or absolute min here, but the graph is unbounded, right? There is, the, um, there is no absolute max or there is no, like, absolute min. So we'll say this graph is unbounded. All right. Um, Let's go and see here, part E, uh, part E, I keep on forgetting like all these, domain or range. Ugh, don't want to do domain or range, but I'll do it. All right, so the domain is a set of all x values. And so you can see this graph has continued from negative infinity, and then it gets to negative 2, and it's undefined. Jump over from negative 2 all the way to 2, it's good, and then it's continuous, and then we get to 2, it's undefined. Jump over it from 2 to infinity, it's good. So basically the domain is all real numbers except for negative 2 and 2. So the way I can write that is just use each interval, and I'm actually going to write it in each one over here. So let's write the domain. So the domain of this section, just forget about the interval, forget about the asymptotes, just from this section is negative, let's zoom in here. This section is negative infinity to negative 2. This section is negative 2 to 2. Again, I'm writing the domain. And from this section is going to be 2 to infinity. So that's really the domain. <laughs> like, all you got to do now is, like, connect these. Now, you can use the union symbol if you want to, or you don't have to. Uh, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to do that for this one. I'll say negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 2 to 2. And then from 2 to infinity. Now, the range is we're looking for the y values, right? So we're basically looking how low does the graph go to how high does it go. So we, we say, well, the graph is going to go all the way down to negative infinity, and then it's going to go all the way up, looks like at 0, but it doesn't look like it's defined for 0. So 0 is going to be out of the uh, range. Then there's nothing happening from 0 to 2, but then at 2, I continue up to infinity. And notice that the point at y equals 2 is defined, so I need to use brackets. So my range here in this case is going to be from negative infinity to 0, and then I'm going to go from the y value of 2 to infinity, OK? Um, let's look at f, which is going to be even, odd, or neither. So let's kind of zoom in out on this one. You can see that this graph is actually symmetrical about the y-axis, right? If I was to flip this graph about the y-axis, you can see that I'm going to be the exact same graph. So this is an example of a even function. OK, and then we deal with our end behavior. As you can see, as this graph expands to the left and to the right, it's not going up to infinity or negative infinity. You can see it's actually approaching the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. So I'll say, you know, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches 0. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches 0. All right, last one. Um, so in this example here, you can have a coordinate point here. Um, ba, 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 ba. So let's go and look at the first one, which is identifying the extrema. Now, 
notice the arrow. So this is going to be continually going up. So therefore, there's no going to be no absolute max. As we get to an absolute min, we look at this point and we say, all right, well, it's part of this graph, but it's not really part of that graph. But again, the definition of an absolute minimum is any points to the left and directly to the right, like let's pick a point here and to there, has to be you know, less than the or high, greater than the minimum point. And you can see that one does work. Actually, the first one is labeled the discontinuities. Sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. We're doing B. So you can see, though, here, this is a minimum value. So I'll say this is a absolute minimum value. That's a lot of curves for my minimum. Absolute minimum value at x equals 0. Now, is this continuous? No, because if I try to graph this, I have to jump. So we can say there is a jump discontinuity. at x equals 0. Hmm. Jump discontinuity and I'm in at x equals 0. Uh, part C is going to be A, when is it increasing, decreasing, or constant? So you can see that this graph as we follow from the left and to the right um, is not going to be increasing at all. You can see from negative infinity to x equals 0 the graph is falling. It's going down. So we'll say that the graph is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 0 and the graph is constant on the interval 0 to infinity. Uh, for part D, we're looking for the boundness. Um, since this graph is continually going up, it's not going to be bounded above. But you can see here that the graph does not go below uh, y equals 0. So we'll say this graph is bounded below. Yeah, I did two bounded below, so I won't. Um, part E is going to be the domain range. Well, you can see here that this, you know, the graph is how far, you know, to the left does the graph go? It goes to negative infinity. How far to the right does it go? It goes to infinity. Is there any undefined values? Yeah, it's undefined here. But at x equals 0, even though it's undefined in this graph, it's defined over here. So my domain is actually going to cover all values. So it's from negative infinity to infinity. And then my range is basically saying how low does the graph go, which is 0, which is included. And then it's going to continue going all the way up to infinity. Did I do an included on my range there? Yeah, I did. OK, good. Uh, part F is going to be the even, odd, or neither. You can see that this does not have neither any symmetry, not symmetry with the y-axis or origin. So we're going to say that's neither. And then last but not least, our end behavior here. Um, so we can say as x approaches um, infinity, so as approaches infinity, you can see that the graph is actually the value of 3. So I've actually never really come across an example like this, but I'm just going to say that the graph is going towards 3 because it is at 3. So it's continuing towards infinity. It's going to be approach. It is um, at 3. I'm not sure if that's perfectly correct, but um, from my understanding, that's what I'm going to roll with. So as x approaches negative infinity, as we're approaching negative infinity, you can see the graph is going up. So we can say f of x approaches infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There is some examples here uh, from the graphs. And then next what we'll do is we'll get into looking at the equations.